a while back I posted on our YouTube community page that we had the GameSir G8 Galileo Type-C. So this is an interesting controller because it's technically the third generation, is it? Using this kind of layout and whatnot. I'm not sure if it's the third. I forgot if it's third. I think it is. You remember GameSir G2 was the one that we did and then there was the G3 and then now there's the G8. Uh, whatever, but either way, this is the third time that we are looking at such a controller by GameSir. The features available are, there, there's a long list, there's also an app of course. And when we open it up, yeah, they're gonna have some random codes here. Measure what can be measured and make measure what extends beyond. Okay, so once you open it up, G8 Galileo, accessories box, controller itself. They have this piece of foam to protect the joysticks from swinging around when it's shipping. Um, do keep these two rings because if you do want to put this in your bag, you can reuse the foam. Just put it in like this, then throw the whole thing into your bag. That's a real useful thing to have. Then extra joysticks. We'll just show you this first then. So as you can see, you do have these joystick caps already included, of course. They are both the same, but you can take out this faceplate. Then, yip this out and change it to any of these extra joystick caps. They have included a total of three different variations. So, this one is a taller joystick cap, but with the same type of texture and shape at the top. The second one is same height but a lot tinier surface. Then the third one is same shape, convex, but this one is like a, I don't know what is this, like a reverse indent. <laughs> I don't know what is it called but either way, different shape. So I'm mostly going to use this. Uh, this one is actually good for shooter games, especially long sticks, you know, you've got more precise tuning for your fingers. And then the accessory box here is also nothing out of the ordinary. you got your user manual, a bunch of stuff, and they don't even give you a USB-C cable. So Gamester sticker. Thank you for your purchase. Why they have to use a cock? And this is the uh, user manual. So the buttons here are real simple. It's also very reminiscent of the um, Nintendo Switch. Oh sh! I forgot the joystick. You can also open on this side if you want to change this joystick. Ugh. So, same thing. You cannot change the face buttons from this side, which is unfortunate, so you have to take out the entire controller just to swap out the face buttons if you want to do so. This thing is obviously bigger than what we have seen previously. As you can see, my entire hand is gonna grip the entire controller. The buttons available, similar to Nintendo Switch. So you got the GameSir button here, which is the I think it's considered the home button if not wrong. And then you got the uh, share button, the three line settings menu. I don't know what's it called, but start and set start and select buttons technically. Then you got the screenshot and then this is the mode button. Then at the back you got two more things here. The the pedals. So these are L4 and R4. And then nothing at the top. These are Analog. 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 Which is good. And then these are also Hall Effect joysticks, which is also real good. Buttons are using the Xbox controller layout. D pad is slightly clicky. Yeah, but they are using the standard D pad cap. So if you want to play fighting games, maybe not going to be that suitable. But either way, real simple in terms of its uh, build quality. So before we connect a phone to this thing, as you can see, there are quite a lot of rubber padding for the USB-C port. So 
if you're gonna add another case here then the USB-C port wouldn't connect to your phone even for the iPhone 15 Pro with the Pitaka Mac Easy 4 case I don't know what's the full name but uh, video at the top right corner there you can watch that case video if you want to know more about it uh, we have to take out the case even for such a thin case it's not gonna work one thing good about this grip is that when you put in the phone you can see the camera bump is totally nestled in that gap protected it wouldn't hinder your, your grip or whatnot and it just stays there then how do i change the mode it's still not detecting so do remember to read the user manual as you can see here you have this setting to change the mode so you have to hold this button and that button then you can change it to ps mode which is white color that is what the uh what was this thing again the iphone is using and if you want to use it in android mode you can change it to green blue color is gtouch mode we will show you gtouch mode later because it does have a software so let's just press this tool remember this is the button oh it changed to white and it instantly works <laughs> so yeah it just works another plug and play controller for the iphone 15 series again since it's using usb-c now so all accessories from androids will now work on iphones as well which is a dream come true i think and then the back buttons it can be remapped so what i have here is the l4 button remapped to the jump button which is a so now when i press it she jumps there is no macro functionality which is surprising and then there are some other features on this controller as well for example uh, changing the analog trigger into a hairline trigger so you can play your shooter games faster then this one is the turbo mode button and then the this one is to switch between the nintendo switch layout and the xbox controller layout um, changing volume and that's about it real simple in terms of its feature as for G-Touch mode, I think now it's time. Oh shit, you're dying! So for Android side, you can install the GameSir app and then you can use the G-Touch mode. So there are lots of permission that you need to give this app. And let me just do it real quick. Start. Uh, let's just plug in the controller. I know this looks ridiculous, but or fold this is what you're gonna get it will start detecting here so as you can see we can have the gamepad test you can test all of the joystick and button what it does that's about it then for key settings yeah you can permanently change it between xbox or switch layout then you can also remap the l4 and r4 buttons here the sticks calibration and dead zone settings you can also do it here as for triggers you want the hairline triggers or you want to manually tune how deep you press it to detect hundred percent that can also be done with the software then now as for g-touch mode we'll have to hold these two button and make it change to blue color now it is in blue color g-touch mode we shall launch the game in g-touch mode uh, again lots of permission that we need to enable and uh, this is where things get funky when i tried it out the first time i'm not sure if it still happens right now so let's go into a game and see what happens okay so i have launched the game if i press this top button overlay here we can see all of the buttons are remapped to all of the not so proper position so i have to redo that so during configuration you can press add button here press on button press on whatever you want then it should add the button where's my button ah y button and then the b button i don't know where to put it so i just put it somewhere random that should be good to go and uh, I think GameSir updated their app 
At first, I couldn't drag any of the buttons to the other half of the fold, but now I can. Then, as you can see, JD, it works. Nice. Yeah, the button remapping feature, that's the G-Touch mode actually, to remap all of the touchscreen buttons to the controller buttons. So, if the game doesn't have any native controller support like Genshin Impact on Android, then you can use this G-Touch feature to make that happen. And um, let's just go to settings. As you can see, I'm still using it in touchscreen mode. There is no native controller support, which is unfortunate. Then, yeah, everything just works. <laughs> my, my jump. Oh no, I didn't set this properly. Oh, take picture. Yeah, that, that's how the G-Touch functionality works. If you're using this controller for emulators on Android, then you don't have to use G-Touch mode because you can remap all of the buttons to work directly with the emulator. So that's it for the GameSir G8 Galileo. How much is the price? So this controller is 80 US dollars and uh, I just realized that this controller also has onboard memory. So remember I mapped the L4 button to the A button just now and uh, I changed to the Galaxy Z Fold 5. The A button still works on the L4 key. So that's good. Then let's do a take screenshot button. Does it work? Oh, it does. Native. So yeah, 80 US dollars for this controller. A lot of features, but if you're gonna use it or not, that's up to you. For Apple users, I think you are not gonna use the G-Touch feature there, so that's mostly for Android users. Yeah, a huge upgrade over the G3, was it? The previous one that we looked at video at the top right corner there. And now we have two ports at the bottom. I forgot to mention that. These two ports are very important, so the first one is a USB-C port for pass-through charging. The other one is a 3.5mm headphone jack. So you can use it with a headphone, earphone if you want to, which is real nice because the other controller that we take a look at, usually they don't give you an audio jack. So this time they do have a breakout board for these two ports, which is really nice. So I think for 80 US dollars, it offers a lot of unique things. So if you want to get that, all of the links are down in the description below. If you have any questions, do leave them down in the comment section as well. And remember to subscribe on your way there. We'll see you guys in the next video. This is a very rigid thing.